You've heard of Android and iOS, but have you ever considered installing a native Linux operating system on your smartphone? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. We're talking about a fully native installation of Postmarket OS, complete with a GNOME desktop environment. I've installed it on my Poco F1 and it's running flawlessly. Now, let's see how you can install it on your own phone. Yes, you can install it on your phone. However, keep in mind that it can't replace your Android OS as it has bugs and fewer features compared to Android. But if you're excited to experience Linux on a secondary phone, then this video is perfect for you. Before diving into the installation steps, let me give you a quick overview of this impressive Linux distribution. This Linux system gives you a proper or GNOME desktop experience right on your phone. It's got the classic control panel layout you'd expect from Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work flawlessly. In fact, I connected a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to make using the system easier. But you can also use the touchscreen if that's what you prefer. Now, let's talk about what works and what doesn't. SIM card functionality isn't supported, so don't expect to make calls or use mobile data. On the bright side, the speakers work perfectly. Something I couldn't get working when I tried installing Windows on this phone. Postmarket OS has all the usual settings you'd find in a GNOME environment. If you're a Linux user, this will feel familiar. Just to confirm, I'll show you the About section of the system. I've installed the latest version of Postmarket OS, and it's surprisingly polished for what it is. The system comes with all the basic Linux apps you'd expect, but here's the thing. In landscape mode, the app icons overlap a bit. It's a bug, probably related to the small screen size, but nothing too serious. I also tested installing third-party apps through the terminal, which works perfectly. For example, I installed a screen sharing app just to see if it could handle additional software. It worked without any issues. The terminal isn't locked or write protected, so you have full control over the system, unlike Ubuntu Touch, which I've tried before. The camera works, but only the rear camera for now. There's no option to switch to the front. As for the App Store, it's there, but don't expect a huge catalog. Most of the apps are specifically designed for ARM-based Linux systems, so it's a bit limited compared to Android or other desktop. The default known file manager is pretty solid. It even displays all the partitions I created on this phone, similar to what you see in TWRP. This makes managing your files straightforward and very Linux-like. I wanted to test how it handles popular tools. So I downloaded the ARM versions of Vcode and Burp Suite. Vcode worked perfectly, but Burp Suite didn't. This shows that while the system is functional, not everything will run smoothly, especially apps that aren't optimized for ARM Linux. The browser experience is nice. Firefox is pre-installed and it opens web pages in desktop mode by default, which is pretty cool. The terminal uses APK, the Alpine Linux Package Manager, to install software. I installed Git as a quick test, and it worked without a hitch. No broken repositories here. Performance-wise, this OS is impressive. It's smooth, runs cool, no overheating issues, and surprisingly, it gave me better battery life than Android. That caught me off guard. The touchscreen is responsive, and the gesture-based navigation feels very similar to Android, but here's where it gets tricky the on-screen keyboard. It's so small that typing is almost impossible. If you plan to use this system regularly, I highly recommend an external mouse and keyboard for a better experience. Now, let's walk through the installation process for Postmarket OS on your phone. 
First, visit the official Postmarket OS website. On your PC, you'll find all the installation guides and resources you need there. Navigate to the Install tab, and the first thing you should do is check if your device is listed under the Supported Devices. If your device is supported, remember that you'll need to unlock your phone's bootloader before proceeding. In my case, I'm using the Poco F1, which is supported Postmarket OS offers several flavors of Linux environments, so you can choose the one that suits you best. I'm opting for GNOME as it's a well-rounded and user-friendly environment. Once you've made your choice, make sure to download the latest version. For the Poco F1, there are two hardware variants. Mine is the Tienma model, so I selected the appropriate files, the boot image and user data file. Make sure to pick the correct files for your phone model to avoid any issues during installation. I already downloaded these files. The files I'm using are pre-built images provided by Postmarket OS. If you're feeling adventurous, you can create your own customized root file system image using their PM bootstrap method. However, I recommend using the pre-built images if they're available for your device, as it's much easier and faster. Once you've downloaded the files, extract them. After extraction, I am deleting the original archive files to avoid any confusion during the next steps. Now, connect your phone to your PC and put it into fast boot mode. Open the terminal and type fast boot devices. If you see the serial number displayed like this, it means the device is connected correctly. You can now proceed to flash the user data file. Next, type fast boot flash user data and drag the user data file into the terminal. You can identify the file by its size. While this is installing, let me explain that to connect your phone in fastboot mode, you need to download and install the fastboot tool and USB drivers. You can download these for both Mac and Windows, and I will provide the download links in the video description. Once the user data file has been successfully flashed, move on to the boot image. Type fast boot flash boot and drag the boot image into the terminal. If you encounter any issues, such as the process freezing, simply reboot your phone into fast boot mode and try again. When both files are flashed successfully, reboot your phone by typing fast boot reboot. If everything has been done correctly, your phone will boot into Postmarket OS. And there you have it, a fully functional Postmarket OS installation on your phone. If you found this tutorial helpful, check out my other videos where I've installed Ubuntu Touch, Kali Linux, and even Windows on Android phones. You'll find the links in the description. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like me to try next.